I'm sure you've heard this a million times. You need to eat your fruits and vegetables, right? They kind of lump in the fruits with the vegetables, which is interesting. But I want to differentiate these two and kind of separate them out and talk about some interesting things about fruit. First of all, when we talk about the vegetables that the majority of the population eats, especially in the US, it's not salads, actually. It's corn, peas, and potatoes. So there's definitely some problems with these vegetables, which I don't want to get into in this video. I want to mainly focus in on fruit. The last time I did a video on fruit, um, boy, I stirred up a hornet's nest. A lot of people were not happy because they love their fruit. So I'm just going to give you the data. You can take it or leave it, but I want you to be aware of a few things. Number one, fruits have at least five times the amount of sugar than veggies. Okay. The second thing that's kind of surprising for people when they look at this is 85% of that fruit is sugar. It makes up the great majority of the fruit itself. And yes, there is vitamin C in the fruit, no doubts. Okay. There's vitamin C and a good amount of it. And there's also phytonutrients, which is great. Okay. Um, and there's fiber. Okay. Which is wonderful, but um, very low protein. Okay. You could not even get close to getting your protein requirements if you lived on fruit. Okay. So there's very little protein, very little fat. You might think that's a good thing, but uh, we need fat, very low iron and very low B vitamins. There's no B12 for sure. Low calcium, low zinc, low omega-3 fatty acids, if any at all, and low vitamin D, if any at all. So if in your mind you are eating fruit for health reasons because you want to get your nutrients, you might want to look at getting it from something else. Now, out of all the fruits, there's some fruits that have low amounts of sugar, and those would be fine if you have them in small amounts, like let's say half a cup or a cup a day, like berries, for example, like 3.5 ounces of raspberry will only give you five grams. So that's pretty low. And then we have blackberries, five grams, blueberries, 12 grams, a little bit more, but you know, doable. And strawberries, six grams. So if you're going to eat berries, if you just focus on raspberries and blackberries and maybe strawberries, you're going to be better off. Now, what about kiwi? People always ask me about kiwi. Well, if we take three and a half ounces of a kiwi, it's 14 grams. I mean, not off the charts. If you have small amounts of it, it's going to be fine. But one thing about kiwi that's very unique is that it's off the charts as far as amounts of vitamin C. So it does have a lot of vitamin C. It does have a good amount of nutrients compared to other fruits. But I will say it's very high in oxalates. So if you're sensitive to oxalates or you are prone to kidney stones, don't do the kiwi. I'm sorry, I guess I'm Mr. Bad News today. All right, let's also talk about the sugar in fruit. Um, it has fructose. It has glucose as well, but it has fructose. Fructose sugar is very unique in that only the liver can metabolize it. All the cells in your body cannot metabolize fructose. They can metabolize glucose, but not fructose. And so because fructose is low on the glycemic index, you might say, wow, it's, it's totally fine, but it's not because it's going to overload the liver. And what's unique about fructose is that there's going to be less suppression of ghrelin, which means you're going to be less satisfied. So you're going to have a tendency to eat more fruit. But if you're doing like high fructose corn syrup, like you can just down a lot of that and you just won't get satisfied. Also, when you consume excess fructose, it can spike cortisol, and then that can increase insulin indirectly. You're also going to create a situation where you're going to be less sensitive to insulin, which leads to insulin resistance, okay? And that leads to a fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So people that consume a lot of fructose, whether it's from high fructose corn syrup or they're consuming a lot of fruit, can end up with a fatty liver and insulin resistance indirectly. And that can create a cascade of issues, which I'm sure you've seen in a lot of my videos. My recommendation would be to eat your vegetables, okay? Eat your vegetables, skip the fruit, maybe have a little bit of berry, maybe an occasional kiwi if you want. But other than that, vegetables have a lot less sugar, they have the fiber, they have nutrients. That's what you should be focusing on. Now, since we mentioned sugar in the glycemic index, I want to give you some more information about something called the glycemic load, okay, which is very important. And I put that video up right here. Check it out. So today we're going to talk about why this harmless 
low glycemic fructose is so bad for us. I mean, fructose comes from fruit. It's harmless, right? The sugar is low on the glycemic index. It's like a 19, whereas glucose is 100. So why is it that fructose and things like high fructose corn syrup are so bad? So just so you know, high fructose corn syrup is about 42 to 55% fructose and the rest is glucose. So it's not 100% glucose at all. Now in nature, fruit is seasonal, right? But nowadays, especially in the US, the daily consumption of fructose is roughly between 85 to 100 grams of fructose every single day. That is a tremendous amount of fruit sugar that's going into our bodies. Now there's a huge difference in how fructose is metabolized versus glucose. Now, when you consume glucose, all of your cells can metabolize it. Okay. But with fructose it is only metabolized or broken down by your liver. So if we're taking like hundred grams of glucose in a given day, and we're force feeding it to the liver, that is a huge stress for your liver. So even though it's low on the glycemic index, but what happens, it creates a significant amount of triglycerides. In other words, the fructose can be converted into fat. This is called de novo lipogenesis, the formation of lipids from carbohydrate. This is what leads to metabolic syndrome, which is also called diabetes. Now, metabolic syndrome is like high blood pressure, high glucose, belly fat, high triglycerides. It's a very, very dangerous condition. And right now, 50% of the population has metabolic syndrome. Also, when you consume fructose, you're actually also generating glucose as well from fructose. And you're also creating insulin resistance. And the more insulin resistance you have, the more this process occurs where fructose is converted into triglycerides. So even though fructose seems to be very harmless, it's very, very hard in the liver simply because the liver is forced to deal with it. And our bodies were never designed to metabolize that much fructose. And as a side note, the fruit that people are consuming has been manipulated genetically to make the carbohydrates much, much higher. So the more metabolic syndrome we have, the more diabetes we have. From 1935 to 1996, there's been an increase in diabetes type 2 by 765%. So avoid fructose at all costs. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before.